Hi boys and girls. It is April 22nd. Welcome to Online Chapel. We are so excited that you are here with us. Um, I hope you had a great spring break and a wonderful Easter, even if it didn't look exactly like a typical Easter or spring break for you. We're just so glad that um, you're safe and you're healthy and that you're getting to spend some time at home uh, with your parents. So we're going to start this morning with a prayer and then uh, go into some of our very favorite worship songs today. So would you bow your heads? God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for loving us when, when we're home, when we're at school, when we're sleeping, when we're making great choices, and even when we're making choices that aren't so great. We're so thankful that your love for us never changes. God, please be with us today as we hear your word. Be with us today as we worship you through singing. God, we're so thankful that even though we can't be together in the same room in the same chapel right now, that through the use of technology, that we're able to worship together. God, we love you so much, and we thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Amen. All right, we are starting with one of our very favorites, My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence. to 
Good morning, guys. How are you? Welcome to chapel. I am so excited for today's chapel because today our special guest is someone that I have wanted to have come and share with you guys for years, but she's not been able to because she doesn't even live here. Um, today, our special speaker is my sister. Her name is Amy Sturtz. She is a children's minister in Asheville, North Carolina. Now, many of you know this, but in case you don't, Mrs. Cox is a twin and we are identical twins. So when you see her and when you hear her, you might think that you're seeing and hearing me, but I promise you it's not. This is Miss Amy and she has come to share with us and uh, she is one of my very, very favorite people um, in this whole planet. And so I am so excited that you guys get to meet her today and hear from her. And so um, I was so excited we were able to, to have her come in. So as we, as we prepare to turn it over to her, let's take a minute and let's pray for her, all right? God, I thank you so much for today. And Lord, I thank you for blessing me with just such a special sister and such a special, wonderful relationship uh, that you've given us. And uh, Lord, I, I just am thankful for the opportunity she has to share with our students today. And, uh, and, and so just um, thank you for the message that you've laid on her heart. I pray that you will use it to encourage us and, uh, and teach us today. And Lord, I just pray for Ms. Amy. I, I pray for her ministry in Asheville, North Carolina. I pray for the kids that she works with as they're out of school as well. I pray that you will just be with them and just be providing for their needs. And as her church looks for ways that they can uh, be a blessing in their community, I just pray that you will continue to be with them and, uh, and to work through them. God, we just thank you so much for your goodness to us. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, guys, here's Amy. Hi, I'm Miss Amy, Mrs. Cox's twin sister. I am so glad to be joining you for chapel today. I wonder, though, is it a little strange for you to see Mrs. Cox's twin? Some people think we look a lot alike. Some people even think our voices sound alike. What do you think? Mrs. Cox and I do have a lot in common. As twins, of course, we have the same birthday, the same parents, but there's other things in common as well. We both love the same types of food. Mexicans are very favorite. We both enjoy reading and we like to wear the same clothes. We dressed alike as children, and sometimes even now as adults, we'll wear the same clothes. But there are things that make us different and unique as well. She lives in Virginia by the beach. I live in North Carolina in the mountains. Her favorite color is red. My favorite color is blue. We both have children, but I have one child who's a girl and she has two children, both boys. And she, we both work with children, but she's the principal at a school and I am a minister at a church. I'm thinking about twins because today's Bible story is about a set of twins. I wonder if you've heard of them, Jacob and Esau. Let me first help us figure out where they are in the whole story of the Bible. We can find them in the book of Genesis, the very first book. And their story begins with their grandfather, Abraham. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, didn't have any children, but God had promised them that they would have children and become a great nation. That meant they would have children, their children would have children, those children would have children, and so on. And that's exactly what happened. Abraham and Sarah had a son named Isaac, and Isaac became the father of the twins we're going to talk about today. Their names, again, are Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob and Esau were not a lot of like. They did not look alike. Esau was rough and hairy, and Jacob was more peaceful and calm and had smoother skin. Esau loved to hunt and be outdoors. Jacob stayed closer to the home and took care of the family's flock. He was a shepherd. So, when Mrs. Cox and I were born, 
we were born almost an hour apart. That's a very long time for twins. But Jacob and Esau were born right back to back. Esau was born first and then Jacob was born. But they say Jacob had reached out and was grabbing Esau's ankle when they were born. It was almost as if Jacob was trying to pull Esau back so he could be born first. These brothers often competed to see who was best, first, and most important. We'll hear this as we learn more about their story. But you need to know that in those days, it did matter who was born first. The son who was born first got almost all of the rights and privileges and inheritance when his parents died. So it mattered that Esau was born first. So, years later, when they were grown, there was one day Esau was out hunting. Jacob was back home and he was cooking a pot of beans or lentils. Esau came in and said, I'm starving. Give me something to eat. Jacob, always trying to figure out a way to be best and most important, said, I'll be glad to share some of these beans with you. If you give me your birthright, your inheritance. Esau said, what does it matter? I'm so hungry, I'm going to starve. I just need something to eat. So Jacob gave Esau some beans to eat. And Esau gave Jacob his birthright as the firstborn. Now, years later, when their father Isaac was very, very old and knew that he wouldn't live much longer, he called Esau in and he said, Esau, it is time for me to give you my blessing. I want you to go out and hunt and get some meat and make my favorite stew. Bring it to me and I will give you my blessing. Now here's something else you need to know about Jacob and Esau. Their parents had favorites. Isaac, their father, favored Esau, the oldest. Rebekah, their mother, favored Jacob, the youngest. Well, Rebekah heard Isaac tell Esau that it was time to give his blessing. So she helped scheme and come up with a way for Jacob to get the blessing, and they were able to trick Isaac, and so Isaac gave Jacob his blessing. When Esau came back and figured out what had happened, how do you think he felt? He was mad. He was so mad he wanted to hurt Jacob, and so Jacob ran away, and he went to his uncle's house his mother, Rebecca's brother, Laban, and he lived at Laban's house for years. There, he continued to raise flock, sheep and goats, and they thrived. He got married and he had children and a family and his life was good, but he missed his home and he knew he had done wrong. One day, he knew it was time to go home and to face Esau and to face what he had done. So he packed up his family, his belongings, he gathered his flocks and they began the journey home. The more they traveled, the more nervous he became. What would Esau do? How would he react when he saw Jacob? after Jacob had done such terrible thing. As they got closer to the house, Jacob sent gifts ahead, some of his best sheep and goats. He sent them to Esau to try to soften him so that Esau might forgive him. The day came when they would see each other, and as Jacob was approaching the house, Esau saw him, 
and the brothers walked toward each other. What do you think Esau did? Esau wrapped his arms around his brother, gave him a hug, forgave him, and welcomed him home. This is such a beautiful end to this story. And I wanted to share this story with you because I know that you are learning about courage. And I think both Jacob and Esau used such great courage. It takes a lot of courage to go to someone that we have wronged and say, I'm sorry. Jacob did not have to leave Laban's house where he had been living. He could have remained there. He could have gone and found a new place to call home. But he had the courage to go home to his family and to his brother to say he was sorry and to ask for forgiveness. It also takes courage to forgive someone. Esau could have responded in so many ways to Jacob's coming home. He could have sent him away. He could have hurt him, but he embraced him and he forgave him. Forgiveness takes courage too. As you remember this story and you think about the twins, Jacob and Esau, I hope that you will remember the courage they both had. And I hope that you will practice this courage. That when you do something wrong, big or small, that you will have the courage to go to the person you need to go to and say you are sorry and ask for their forgiveness. And if someone does something to you and they come to you asking for forgiveness, I hope that you will have the courage to forgive them. I hope that you will know always and no matter what, God loves you. There is nothing that you can do that will make God not love you. God is with you and God will go with you wherever you go. Blessings on you today and blessings on you in this time when you are away from your friends and your school and other places you like to go. Thank you again for having me join you for chapel today. I have so enjoyed being with you. Know that I am praying for you. And as we end our time together, I invite you to say this prayer with me. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Now and forevermore. Amen.